We do have several Nashville businesses that are facing thousands of dollars in fines or the possibility of closing their doors because of COVID-19 health violations. Fox 17 News Justin McFarland is live downtown outside one of the locations facing fines this morning. Justin. Yeah, good morning. We're just outside of the Losers Bar and Grill here on 4th Avenue. And uh, this is one of the locations here facing some of those fines. According to the Metro Health Department, when they made a visit he back here in November, this particular bar, they were not social distancing inside. They also say they were not uh, 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 enforcing the mask order here at this particular location. They also say uh, that they have multiple people hanging out near the bar. Now, other owners of other businesses here say that enforcing these mask mandates on adults is more difficult than you think. As adults, we're, we're doing as best we can to walk around and tell people to put their masks on. Um, we're in, you know, doing what we what we can as far as you know, demanding adult people and not children to do what is has been directed by by um, by the city. Now, this particular bar had their case deferred, but if they found if they were to be found guilty, they could face up to three thousand dollars in fines or they might have to close their door at least for a couple of weeks. Now, coming up in a few minutes, we're going to take you over to West End where there is a gas station. Well, believe it or not, they've been selling the miners, according to the city, four times in the last two years. New tonight, after a year and a half of pushing for change, a Tennessee rape survivor is being heard. Hours ago, the Tennessee House passed a bill increasing the penalty for minors who commit rape. This comes after a brave teenager spoke to Fox 17 News about her convicted rapists who did not get any jail time. Fox 17 News' Kathleen Jacob has been following this story from the beginning, and she joins us now from the Capitol. It was an emotional day for this family who has really been through hell the past year and a half fighting for change ever since we talked to their brave young daughter, a survivor of a sexual assault a year and a half ago. She's been willing to tell her story to fight for change so that others don't have to go through what she did. And now, after this year and a half, we're finally there. House 91, no names. House Bill 323, I've received a constitutional majority. I hereby declare a pass without objection. The motion to reconsider is tabled. And with that passage, this family finally has a little piece of relief, knowing others won't go through what their daughter did, watching her convicted rapist walk out of court with just probation. I'm conflicted. I want to say I'm happy. But in order for this to, for us to be here, what happened to our daughter had to happen. And I don't, I wish it didn't have to. It's hard to believe it's been a year and a half since Cadence first opened up to us after two 13-year-old boys raped her and filmed it. What happened to you? I got raped. A life-altering thing to go through and a horrific thing for parents to hear happen to their little girl. It's why after she bravely came forward, not only was it as a survivor, but as an advocate, reaching out to local lawmakers to make sure other survivors don't have to watch their rapists just walk away. Right now, the way the law is, uh, that child would have been on the same bus going to school in the same school as the person they victimized under our current laws. What would you say to her when the time comes? That through her bravery and through her actions, she there's a law in place, like the entire, just the rules of order around the judicial system change because of her actions. That's important. She has done and accomplished something important, something that matters to the families all across the state. And after almost two years of having to face what happened head on to foster change. Compared to when we first met, I would say that today's a day of like absolution of good thing. We can reach out to someone and someone will listen and do something about it proving this teen's courage to speak up about something so horrific wasn't in vain. Next, it's going to the Senate where it's expected to pass with flying colors and all because of a brave young survivor.
New tonight, some state lawmakers agree Tennessee State University is owed millions of dollars in back pay from the state for funds being withheld from TSU's Agriculture Department. The University of Tennessee at Knoxville and Tennessee State are Tennessee's only universities with ag programs, which receive federal dollars that are matched by the state annually. Special committee meeting for months now has found that for decades UT got all of its money, but TSU did not. TSU's president, Glenda Glover, says as missing out on this funding often meant her university struggled to make ends meet. State committee found today TSU is owed anywhere from 150 million to 544 million dollars. There was a suggestion made that this happened in the past. It can stay in the past. No, it cannot stay in the past. This is the, the past has affected this future of TSU. Has affected our growth. Has affected our development. Has affected our research. So no, it can't stay in the past. The past is the present in this case. State lawmakers will soon determine uh, an exact dollar amount owed to TSU and that will most likely be paid during next year's state budget cycle.